we in the United Kingdom are not we're not accelerating our knowledge discovery fast enough because we're not sharing fast enough or at all and we're never going to share until the cultural and credit environment of science and academia changes. So what are you going to do about that? We would suggest, what would I suggest? I would suggest that um, there is as great a credit for, um, for publishing your data as there is for publishing your papers, that you invest in um, attribution and reputation protecting infrastructure for publishing the results we're, we're producing so that you can, your scientists can get some credit from this. Um, you start enforcing the policies your funding agencies have invented but don't bother to enforce. Um, you start a dialogue with the publishers so that the publishers really uh, understand that a dead piece of PDF is not the be-all and end-all of science. What else would I do? Um, I'd say get a grip of your intellectual property regulations so universities are encouraged to to suppress results on some vague idea they may make cash out of it later um, and this often is not the case um, and we should be reversing this we should be thinking about uh, encouraging um, organizations to be able to much more freely and make their results available by rethinking the whole way that we exploit intellectual property in universities. You should give intellectual property to the individual scientist and not to the university. But the um, Stanford um, supports the intellectual properties held with the academic and they encourage their academics to go out and uh, form collaborations, go out and make new innovations um, and they do jolly well out of it. They trust the fact that some of them will be successful and they will come back. The regime um, in the UK is um, if we can't, we may make something out of it so don't let it go out and uh, we would rather that it died, suffocated. We would rather suffocate the results than have somebody else benefit. Well, how is that benefiting the greater good? Right. So, uh, so I think it's morally reprehensible to suppress knowledge that has been generated by public funds, which is what this does. And, uh, and I think it's also morally reprehensible that uh, we have um, reward systems in universities that reward people for hugging their results rather than distributing their results. And that's because there is no way of them being able to get credit for doing it. And particularly, there's no way for them getting credit for curating their data. So the reason people don't put things out may not be because they don't want those results to be available, because there's no mechanism for them to do it. There's no resource to put them in. There's no money allocated to tending them, because preparing data for public access is incredibly expensive. 
that's the difference between something being available and something being usable. Um, so it's really um, not a, a sort of sense of science being selfish. It's just scientists with the limited resources they have doing the best they can. Um, so all of this is, is just, we're just building up big repositories of, um, of results that never see the light of day. The first the things I would ask for one a um, a, a straightforward way for scientists to be able to at least deposit their results somewhere of all different kinds at least park them um, so uh, sort of a public commons uh, or ways of getting hold of a public commons I would uh, ask funders to fund the proper management of data um, and the proper management of its uh, and the proper management of its quality you know the husbandry behind data and to respect that that is part of the scientific method and not to just cut that bit because it's computing and therefore doesn't matter um, so that would be to properly resource it um, and to properly um, provide the resources so that when they say it, there is a data management sharing uh, obligation that there's a mechanism for people to be able to do that and so just saying it is not good enough you actually have to know people do it um, I would ask po institutions funding councils uh, promotion bodies uh, publications to respect other forms of data output, uh, other forms of scientific output other than a finished PDF in a peer-reviewed and expensive journal. So to understand that there are multiple ways that you can produce things and those multiple, multiple ways demand credit and there should be mechanisms of credit uh, but so that's a technical problem and also a social problem. So because technically you could build the, the DOIs or identifiers so that people would always tie to their data or make their data available, but then there's a social and cultural emphasis to make it happen. That's happening in the environmental sciences because of climate gate. Now we've just got anally retentive and panicky about data being truly able to support arguments but you know let's not lurch from crisis to crisis we should really have this as a, a kind of a principle okay so um, and it strikes me as well that it, that's it's not just uh, technical and social and cultural that happens because of policy yep and so what would you say directly uh, a policy change for UK um, higher education and research what would it be? So um, the policy for higher education and research should be to uh, to have a policy would be a policy. So rather than uh, consider that the policy is somebody else's problem, it should be considered at a national level. So we traditionally have had national repositories, national uh, mechanisms of being able to support uh, a sort of scientific uh, publication and then these have been dismantled in that the institution will manage it. Well no they won't actually, the institutions are financially uh, under pressure to, to uh, uh, and they haven't got the economies of scale to do it. Um, so the institutions either have to bind together to build the economies of scale to do it or it has to be done at a nationally orchestrated level um, with discipline specific um, uh, repositories or, or mechanisms. We used to have one in the uh, arts and humanities which was cancelled by the funding agency and it was a splendid resource 
and now there is no resource. We're talking about the AHT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think was a terrible mistake. Um, but uh, that uh, that is a that there has to be a policy. But at the moment, it's all it's bitty. It's a uh, little bit here, a little bit there, with no kind of um, continue, no kind of strategic uh, sustainability route. So for me, the biggest problem is there is no sustainability for mechanisms for any of these large-scale resources. If you're going to do open stuff, you need to make it open so that it's um, so it persists beyond the end of the PhD or beyond the end of the project. Um, and there is no sustainability route. You can't apply for cash for that. So you can only apply for cash for novel things, not to sustain things that are actually useful to other people. And so the really big thing then, I guess, is fund um, strategically fund uh, sustainable infrastructure that enables um, scientists to be open. Yeah, that's the one sentence. <laughs>